What's shaking everybody? Welcome back to the half ass Garage. Today we're going to start on this thing. So it's a 79 CX500 custom. I guess that's just the trim level on it. But the carbs need to be replaced. The carb kits came and uh, this is going to be a kind of back burner type stuff. So we're just going to do it over the course of a few days. And uh, that's why you'll see just my clothes change and stuff. So the way that I'm going to work this thing is it's not critical that um, the bike gets on the road right now. We have some nasty weather. It's going to be cold and rainy coming up. So I'm just going to fit this in where I can and uh, we're going to put the carbs all together on it and get it running. So whenever the nice weather is here, we got something cool to ride. I'll show you around the bike. So this is it. Got the factory Comstar wheels. Those. Um, You'll see those on a ton of bikes. On my early videos, you might have seen on this lift was a 81 CB750F. Um, that bike just had too many problems with it, so I let it go. And uh, this is what we've got now. I don't even know what's back here. Oh, my battery tender and stuff. So yeah, vintage, um, <laughs> vintage cargo thing. And, you know, it's kind of scuffed up, but it, this is the root beer uh, flavor of paint right there. I can't tell you what, what mileage it is because the gray, you see the gray kind of tint or black or whatever. That's pretty common that these things will um, fall apart kind of inside. And uh, that's what happened on this one. Tack works though. I don't care about much else. It does work great. It runs and drives great. That is from the previous owner, but uh, I just kind of left it all in there. It came with uh, an extra set of carbs, which should have been foreshadowing, but uh, those are kind of gnarly and, and messed up. So one thing that you might notice, I'm going to teach you something here, in case you don't already know. See the dot? They all have dots. And on a lot of these, you'll see this particular thing. See how those that screw there is totally rounded over and cammed out? It's like just, just, just destroyed. Typical with all of the um, Japanese bikes of this era. I don't know if they still do it. That dot means that that isn't a Phillips head screw. That's a JIS screw and not, uh, you know, an Imperial or whatever, ASC, whatever the American Phillips thing is. That's a Japanese industrial standard screw, which means it takes a different, um, a different screwdriver entirely. So all of these things are um, a different screw. See the dot? So I have the correct screwdrivers and I'll show you. The proof is whenever you try to use a Phillips head, you see it kind of is loose in there, right? When you use a JIS, it locks right down in there. It doesn't really move. So you can just take this thing right off, just like that. Um, that is, Using those is what causes all of this. So, um, you know, they're not easy to just find at any store. I had to order these online, but if you were familiar with working on these Japanese 80s bikes like this, then uh, if you were doing it for a living, most likely you would have yourself a set of JIS screwdrivers. So you'll need those, or will need those, in order to, you know, do the carbs. There's not a whole lot really going on with it. Uh, I have to take the tank off. There's a bolt there and there's one in the back underneath of it. And then the seat off, which is bolted on too, back in there. You can see it in there. And uh, then the seat and the tank will come off. Should have uh, better access to the carbs. Now the one thing about these Hondas that is kind of funky is uh they're they're discontinuing everything with with this you can't buy this carb kit through honda anymore where i was able to buy it last year through the local honda dealer in town but no longer available anymore these rubber boots here um this one doesn't feel too bad but they get hard and they'll start to crack and that's a huge vacuum leak and that's one of the main reasons why a lot of these um, bikes end up just kind of down for the count is people just can't get these parts 
or they're super expensive and no one wants to do it because the value of this bike isn't that much. So, I don't know where that goes right now. I have to see where it actually goes down to. Oh, air box. <clears throat> so I wonder, huh? Wonder. I wonder where that could have went to. That popped off, goes to the air box. I wonder if there's some funky thing that might, <laughs> wouldn't that suck? If that's the only thing that's wrong, is there some type of ginormous vacuum leak? These are, um, I, now don't quote me. I'm not a, I'm not a Japanese bike kind of guy, even though I've got my FZ6 over here. I don't really, man, this thing's looking rough. I bought that thing new. I don't really do a ton of work on bikes, but, um, these are like a vacuum actuated carb. What is it? Variable vacuum, uh, something or other. I don't remember. VVT carb or something. Uh, they have to have the right, they have to have a good vacuum or else the carbs won't function properly from my understanding. Uh, comment down below and let me know what there is that I'm missing with all of this stuff because there's probably a ton. But uh, yeah, you can't have any air leaks with this thing. That's why the boots are incredibly important to have right um, or else they won't, they won't work correctly. That's my understanding. So I don't know where this goes. It obviously has to go somewhere because it's got a clip on it. I'll just have to dig around and see what is going on. There it is, right there. It goes to this part. You can see it right there. Focus. There you go. That's where it goes to. Wouldn't that be crazy if that's all that was wrong with it? I don't think so, though. But that very well could be. Who knows? Um, the story with this thing... The story is... Uh, this, this bike, this all-original, basically, Survivor that's never been cut up, it's never been repainted, it's never had custom marker lights or any... And nothing has been done to this thing. The previous owner was going to throw it away. It was going out to the trash. They put it out at the trash at the side of the road, but the uh, the garbage men obviously can't pick up a whole brand, a whole motorcycle and throw it in the back of their truck. They tried to give it away to some charities. Charities didn't want motorcycles. So they found out that I was into bikes and stuff and was like, hey, come get this thing. Uh, it's free, you can have it. And I'm like, what? And it run, ran and drove. Like I just, drove it up on the trailer and I rode it around. So um, being as that it's an original bike, nothing has changed on it. The carbs have, you know, diaphragms and O-rings and stuff in them as far as I'm aware uh, in different seals, those things will degrade over time and crack and whatever. So the bike just started losing kind of power. You could tell it was sputtering and you could smell a lot of gas out of the exhaust, things like that. All the valve uh, valve train has been adjusted, so it's all within spec. Everything is good on the valve train. It just you, it had that typical carburetors jacked up um, kind of action going on with it. So um, I just parked it because I was busy with other stuff. So brings us to here. Here we are. It's got a brand new battery, um, and I don't know anything about them. <laughs> other than I think that this is Honda's very first liquid-cooled bike if I'm not mistaken. Um, cool side note, they also made the CX650 with a turbo. So they actually had a, a like right in 86 or maybe this, this year, I don't remember exactly, but look it up. CX650 turbo, it's crazy stuff. They're, uh, again, you can't get parts for them. So <laughs> whatever. But that's what I know about this. Let's just hook it up and see if we can get it to work. Funny story. I actually have the factory service manual for this bike, but I can't find it. So I'm not entirely sure where this, what this does. 
probably some type of PCV type of deal. Let's put the tank on there and just sit it on there. Plug in a fuel line and just see what happens. So I don't know what that thing was that we plugged back in. Okay, well, that wasn't a problem. Now we know. Well, this is escalating quickly. <clears throat> the air box is held onto the bottom, and it's kind of got all these captured nuts. Uh, you really need to take the exhaust off to get to the bolt that's behind this frame right here is like a nut back in there uh, I guess I can go across but that still leaves this front one uh, it's pretty difficult so take the rear bumper or rear fender off and uh, you can drop the like the mud shield or whatever down and out of the way a little bit the air box is on by that one screw and I just slid it back enough that these are nice and soft still too that's good um, I slid it back enough that I should be able to snake it out I don't know if these will come off or not uh, it's just kind of an update I'm kind of figuring out how to get these things off like I said um, on the CB 750s these are a nightmare and uh, <clears throat> they're really hard to find so they crack all along here. These are still in good shape. Um, I just have to muscle these off because they're a pretty tight fit. That's basically about it. It's just uh, just struggling. So uh, whenever I get these off, I'll show you what's going on. All right, I was a little bit worried about taking these things off of the inside here because I figured that I was going to have a gasket, but it just has an O-ring. Uh, I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's pretty full of fuel. There we go, finally. What else is hanging up in here? So those slides are controlled by vacuum. Probably, I don't know, I don't even know how they work. Venturi action slides them up. So we're going to take this apart and see what we can do. All right, let's see how big of a mess we can make with this thing. Hopefully we can find something apparent right off the bat so we can figure out why it's not running right. I'm not a carb expert. I'm taking this, I've never had one of these apart. I'm just doing it with you because it's something I gotta do. I figure I might as well make a video about it. So, I don't even know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. All right. So we'll see if there's anything horrible uh, right off the bat. Gross. Now, again, I don't know anything about carbs, really, so um, just kind of guessing here. It's nice to see that these carbs haven't been taken apart before. Ew, nasty. I don't know. I don't know what kind of fuel this is. I'm kind of wondering if 
fuel isn't part of the problem. I bet this stuff wouldn't burn. All right, we're gonna we're gonna test my theory right quick. Let's see. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's burning, but it ain't burning much. That might be the whole problem right there, everybody. That's weird. Um, <clears throat> yeah, unusual. That, that might be the whole thing right there, is that the fuel is just so crappy that it just won't burn. Well, guess we might as well put a couple of seals in it and stuff while we're here. Ooh, gross. Float height's nice though. Well, maybe not. It's a little low. I wonder if these are, well, we're gonna find out. Hopefully, we don't have a sunk float. Nope. Excuse me. Just the float height is crap. So... We're going to... Figure that out. Yeah, float, floats need to be adjusted a tad. They're a little low. Hmm. A little bit more. Definitely better. It's all that good. Needle isn't deformed. Looks good. Gas is gross. Not a ton of sediment down there, but definitely some mud and whatnot. I'm going to go ahead and soak that in some chem dip right quick. Let that kind of eat away at some of this. There we go. See if the jet's plugged. Nope. Perfect. I, I You probably can't see it, but it's perfect. No problems with that jet. It's not plugged up. It's not corroded. Nothing's wrong with it. Emulsion tube. Motion tube is perfect. It's all these series of holes in it. Uh, and then down the center, completely fine. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with that at all. It doesn't even really need to be cleaned. This is your primary jet. Perfectly clean. No corrosion, no blockage, no dirt, no nothing. Well, that's fine. Can't do anything with this. These are pressed in. 
but uh, the kit comes with a new little stopper. Some of these carbs have a, a screw-in type. Uh, I forgot what what needle thing that that is. What part of it? Again, I don't know like a ton about carbs. What was that? Half one. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's going to two and a half. This looks pretty good. Yeah, no corrosion on it or anything, really. Mm -hmm. Somebody's calling me. Come on. There we go. Perfect. Look at it. Look how clean it is. Like everything is super nice and clean. All right, there's an O-ring down in here. Well, I can't hardly get to it. Oh, where's my screwdriver? Where are you, SK? Where did I put it? Huh. I don't know what I did with it. It's a primary emulsion tube, I believe. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can see light through those holes, but it's it's in nice shape. It's not even dirty, like I said, it's crazy. Uh, a little dirty in the float bowl, nothing nuts in here. This, you gotta get out. What do they call these things? Idle cutoff or air cutoff valve? I don't know what it does. It cuts off the air and it's a valve. A little bit of kind of not not really corrosion. O-ring still looks good. All the passages look clean. So, it doesn't, doesn't even look bad. Usually these are all rusted. No, it's perfectly clean. Look at that. Um, see if there's any tears in this. No, actually, these look really good. Uh, I'm starting to lean towards that. The biggest problem with this carburetor is there's crap gas in it. But how? I don't understand. That's the part that, that baffles me is um, I poured gas directly from one of my cans in that. And then uh, I ran my other bike on it, too. And the four-wheeler and all that stuff. So I'm not sure exactly how gas like this could have gotten involved. But whatever. It is what it is. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Check it out. Everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to... Oops. I don't know what just fell out. Screw. I'm going to go uh, spray this down with uh, carb cleaner and uh, make sure all the passages are clear and nice um, and then spray it out with some air.
All right, clean the bowl off, good enough. Um, this area here is, I don't know, some type of varnish or sealer, but we have an O-ring for that, so it's not gonna matter. All right, the jets have been cleaned. Not that they really needed it. They're basically perfect. Emulsion tubes cleaned up. Everything's good. This thing, I don't even know what it does. But uh, yeah, we're gonna put that thing back in it. I don't know, this thing almost looks like it was serviced, but it doesn't show any signs of being serviced. So if at some point it had been serviced, maybe it was done by a Honda dealer with the right tools. I don't know. Everything is cleaned out, blown out with air. Seems good to me. So we're just going to reassemble it. I guess flush the fuel tank. That sucks. Um, and see what happens with some fresh gas in it. Okay, I got these things assembled. Uh, it was zero fun, so uh, there are better videos online to show you if you're interested in this, how to put this thing together. I had to refer to a couple of them, and uh, this old crusty thing, because of the way that, man, it's like a puzzle. You have to separate these springs and washers right there to fit over that and fit the fuel tube in between both carbs and well, what was the other one? Oh, line this thing up so it's right on there and then fit the spring on it all at the same time 
uh, or else this thing doesn't go together. You need like four hands, five hands, like a team of people. I don't know how they do it in the factory, but anyway, everything should be done on this. I'm going to go ahead and install it into the bike and uh, basically reverse procedure as to what I did before. Once I get it all back together on the bike, then we will try to get it started. So if you have any um, questions about how these carbs work, don't ask me because I'm not that great at it. I really did look on uh, some of the Facebook groups. I'm part of a CX500 group on there and all those different groups um, and just looking on YouTube and stuff. So if you have one of these bikes and you need uh, to learn how any of this stuff works, check out the Facebook group for the CX500s or just look on YouTube and you'll have way better informative stuff than what I was providing because like I said this is just part of the project it's not really a tutorial like most of my stuff anyway let's put it on the bike I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and then I'll just bring you back when it's time to start it up because other than this it's just turning the same screws and stuff that you saw me turning before so we'll uh, get them on flush the tank start the bike hopefully so I'm just gonna let that thing drain. It's not too bad. But it's a lot more yellow, yellow than I'd like. But it's not that weird orange that was uh, in the carbs. Anyway, hopefully that's about a gallon in there. Uh, it's not a ton. I'll show you what I got done over here. I've got that uh, breather hooked up again. Got these, I don't know what you call them, little uh, intake pipes on. Obviously no fuel. Air box is back on it. Uh, ECU, I guess that's what that is. That's back on it. Everything is tight. Sort of. These aren't tight. But, uh, so I'll put this thing on it. <laughs> this thing on it. Uh... This thing even has the original toolbox, little tool bag rather. Look at that. Maybe we'll take a look at that and see. It's pretty neat. Look at that. It's rare to find the original tools. I don't want to open them because they're a pain to pack again. But yeah, the original tools. Holy cow. Rare. I mean, even my bike, which I had from new, I don't even have the original toolbox in there, the little tool bag. So, just have to move the coil supports down. I'll wait on that. And then, uh, yeah, so. It's kind of gross looking. Now, um, <laughs> looks, looks bad. All right, this is what we got out of it. So, definitely a weird orange, kind of a tinge out of there. Um, I don't see any sediment in the bottom of the things or anything it's like perfectly clear there's so there's nothing in the tank i did rinse it with a little bit of fresh gas but i don't know if you can see in there very good or not but the tank is spotlessly clean so we shouldn't have any issues with this thing at all all right it's another day it's the final day i think for the cx 500 so um I got everything put back on it, as you can see. We'll go over there and take a look at it. All right. Um, the case right there. I couldn't really get this on by myself because of the way that it has to lock into there and there. This is free swinging at that point, and I was afraid I was going to either break the tail light or, you know, scratch it all up. So I, I didn't put that on. I need some help to do that, and I have no help right now. So anyway... Uh, I didn't have any fuel line to take this off and switch it, so I'm going to have to leave that. We're going to run this just for now, temporarily, like it was, and whatever. So, side covers or side pieces need to be put on. So, I guess, let's figure out if the thing will run now. I guess I'll put you on a stand. This will be it on the CX-500 for now, so that we can move on to other things. Pretty gross still. I gotta clean up in here, this place is a nightmare. That's last week's video, so 
you know, check out the header video if you haven't seen that one yet. And let's figure this out. Choke or no choke? Let's try it without the choke. Try it with a little bit of choke. Off. Gas is off. Noob. I'm not sure what the backfiring is all about. I never used to do that. So, we just have to wait and see how it clears up. Cool little temp gauge. How much does that say it's got? 15,000 miles? Yeah, strange. up a little bit hear the rain let's let's uh add a little bit to the mix screws on that and see what changes um those are at two and a half turns out right now the carbs those exact carbs i took out were at three and a half or three and a quarter something like that on them uh before when we originally took it out uh, it ran fine, so I don't know if it could potentially be the, the mix screws, uh, that issue or not, I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and richen them things up and see what's up. Luckily this isn't hot yet. Um, we're going to do a half a turn out and see where we at. There we go. So that's a half a turn. I'll go do a half a turn on the other side. We'll let it sit like this for a little bit and warm up and see what changes, if anything. All right, so the temperature's coming up into normal range. I really need to get under there and um, tighten up all of the cables.
All right, so that's three and a half like it was. Feels like it's worse. Yeah, it feels worse. We're do one full turn back in. All right, so we got a full turn back in on it. I don't know. Good enough to move around though. Um, I'll have to look up some stuff, figure out what the deal is with those carbs, um, the proper way to, you know, adjust them and whatnot. Uh, the crossover tube, which is right here, that's starting to get hot, or the coolant line, or whatever you want to call it. So it's kind of hard to get in there and start monkeying around with those um, mixture screws. But we're going to take it off of here and then put the go kart back on it, or up on it. So hopefully, once it's not super rainy and nasty out, I'll get a chance to fine tune that a little bit more. You can see it's kind of gross, it's like 50 degrees out. I'll do some research and figure out how to tune those carbs correctly. None of the cables are tightened down right or anything like that, and I'll just kind of figure it out as I go. I don't really mess with carbs a whole, uh, carburetors a whole lot, especially on bikes. Um, it's just not something that I, I do it like once every two years, and then I forget everything by the end. So anyways, let's uh, get this thing off of there. Get it on its actual kickstand for once in two years, and then uh, try to move the go-kart on it. One thing to note is that this fuel is essentially lawnmower gas. It's just the 87 ethanol. I don't know if that uh, plays a role in how this thing runs or not. I'll have to figure it all out, figure out what, uh, what type of fuel it takes. Maybe it takes like 91 or something like that. It seems like it wouldn't in the 80s. But I would assume their fuel was a little different back then. Okay. It looks kind of sporty without the luggage on the back. Um, Got to be honest with you, I've, I was never a huge fan of that big kind of crazy luggage rack on the back. But it's kind of vintage. Came with the bike. So I kind of figured, you know, I'd leave it on there for the nostalgia, the vintage look. And uh, that, that would just add to it. Even though it doesn't look as cool, it's, it's cool because it's from the same era as the bike. So let me know in the comments down below if you thought that the luggage thing is cool and I should leave that on or if I should keep it like this. So, you know, check that thing out. Let me know. It's, you know, the whole bike has got some scratches and dings on it here and there. But it is neat because it's a, a vintage piece. So definitely... Uh, yeah, definitely let me you know what you think. Luggage, no luggage.